Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. No, the CPU was not stolen. I just wish users who have to use a computer every day got some basic training. I work remote IT for a medical facility, which is a very high-paced environment, and it can be rough some days, but generally after I ask a few questions, I can do the troubleshooting I need to fix the issue. If not, I can send the case to a team on site to get the issue resolved. I got a call today that started out like this. SF equals me, C equals caller, R is some random person. SF, thank you for calling. How can I assist you today? C, the CPU was stolen. As a note, stealing a CPU for one of these computers requires a lot of time and a lot of work because most of the computers in this location are locked in a cage. SF, Alright, do you see any dented metal or screws lying on the floor? C. No, why would that stuff be there? SF. Well, if a CPU was stolen, they would need to unscrew the cage, case, fan mount, and potentially CPU mount. Customer. Well, the hard disk drive is saying it's corrupted. SF. Okay, so is the CPU intact? C. No, I'm telling you that the hard drive is corrupted. Do you even work with computers? <laughs> SF. Uh, okay, can you read off the error that the hard disk drive is giving you? C. Entering power sleep mode, and I can't get it to show anything else. Yeah, so the CPU being stolen, I have no idea what that means. This hard disk drive error just means the computer isn't getting a video signal, so I document what actually is going on and get back to the call. C. Okay, so from the sounds of the error on the screen, it may be that the cable is loose or bad. Could you please check the cables for me? Customer. <laughs> No, the CPU was stolen and I already checked the cables. SF. Could you try turning the computer on for me to check to see if any lights pop up? Customer. No, I'm telling you. There's a bit of a scuffle and some random worker comes on. Random worker. The CPU was stolen and we need a tech up here to fix it. I try to do the same troubleshooting steps to maybe hopefully get a lock that it is an issue with the cable or it's not plugged in, but... Random guy. Look here, I know more about computers than you do, and when I say the CPU is stolen, I know it. And on top of that, our hard disk drive is saying it's corrupt. I mute myself, sigh, and smack my head. SF. Okay, I'll send the tech over to take a look at it. Random guy. There, was that so hard? Click. <laughs> Sometimes the only way to win is to lose. I checked back on the case a little bit ago and saw the solution the techs gave. Went to site, turned on computer. <laughs> oh, God. People are funny, man. Yep. Everybody always knows better than the tech, I guess. Why even have tech support? Eh, just let everybody fix their own stuff, right? What do you mean you don't know everything that concerns my own job? Here's another rant I need to get off my chest as it happened to me yesterday, yet again. I work at a big company with multiple departments and 10 times as many employees. We provide technical support for all of them, yet most of the time I struggle trying to figure out what exactly they need help with. Reports. There are thousands generated every hour, every day, every week. Client reports, status reports, daily reports, weekly reports, quarterly reports, etc. We have many systems that generate the reports. In many ways we can generate them. It can be a simple scheduled data source which spits out into a CSV the contents of an SQL query. It can be an actual report that was designed with a template and on a regular basis gets the figures updated with the latest data. It can be a web panel export in Excel that is emailed to whoever the user wants because they can set those up themselves. Then there are Excel spreadsheets every team uses that can pull data via SQL connection or a third-party add-in. Also, we have email notifications in HTML forms that have nice tables and graphics in them. I call them what they are. Scheduled data sources, panel exports, spreadsheets, etc. So I can keep track of which system generates them and how. For the users, however, they're just reports. So yesterday, a user reaches out via Teams. User. Hey, I need help with the generic name report. Me. What generic name report? Can you be a bit more specific? User. The Department X generic name report. Me. I'm going to need some more than that. Is this a report generated by System A or System B? Is it an Excel file or a PDF? Do you get it via email or do you consult it via web portal? User, it's the afternoon generic name report that is sent to Department Y. <laughs> me, I still don't know what you're talking about. User sends me a path on one of the shared drives where analysts save all their documents. User, it's this generic name report. 
Me, finally getting somewhere. Ah, I see. Yeah, this isn't a report any of our systems generate. This is manually created by analysts. You need to ask whoever owns this to help you. User. Okay, thanks. Sometimes I wonder how small people think our company is. Or maybe users think the world revolves around them and fail to realize there are other departments that deal with other stuff. And I cannot know every single aspect of everyone's roles. That's right, it's all about me! I've come to learn over the years that most people, whether they mean to or not, or are arrogant about it or not, some people are nice as pie, but they still think the world revolves around them and you should just know what's going on. A little traveling music, please. This was from the early days at my current place of work. I was riding the help desk, and an email came in from a site about 30 minutes away. Strange beeping coming from the comms closet. Actually, a stack of network hardware and a UPS underneath a staircase. They included a picture. So beeping means UPS issues. I looked at the picture and did a little zoom and enhance. Okay, just zoom. On the UPS display. 47 minutes remaining on battery, and the picture was taken 15 minutes ago. I'm in my car within minutes, calling the boss and telling him I'm going to prevent a site outage. Got there with maybe 8 minutes to spare by driving like I usually do, which I do not recommend. Plug a lamp into the same outlet as a UPS. No current. Nor does any nearby outlet provide current. I had to run a 50 foot extension cord. Yes, I know, that's not good. To the UPS to get it powered back up. Check the breakers. They're all on. The circuit was just dead. Let the UPS charge up a bit and found a shorter run to an outlet everyone forgot existed. Had the site manager call an electrician and managed to get things working with zero downtime. Sure, I probably could have diagnosed it over the phone and gotten it working, but if that didn't work quickly, they'd have gone down completely while I was on the road. Well, you get two points for being on top of things and being willing to, you know, solve the problem and get things band-aided up until a permanent solution could come along. A dead circuit with all the circuit breakers actually on? I can't imagine... Either it dropped a neutral somewhere, maybe, or a G maybe there's a GFI on that circuit somewhere and the GFI popped. It just sounds strange to me that there's no outlets in that circuit working, but the circuit breaker's on. It sounds like it, they lost a connection or something. A Tale of Two Mice It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. I received a call from a user who was referred to me stating he was having difficulty signing into his laptop. He was unable to click the submit button. I walked him through a few things, restarting, etc., but I could tell I wasn't getting anywhere over the phone. I go to see him and observe his attempt to log in. The gentleman types in his password. No num lock or caps lock issues. I watch. He grabs his wireless USB mouse and gracefully places it on the laptop touchpad and starts twirling it around as if it was the mouse pad. I advise the gentleman that he should try using his mouse on a flat surface like a desk or a table, and he may find it easier to click the button to sign in. The ticket resolution. Difficulty signing in caused by interference from two input devices. Relocated mouse to flat surface. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anybody try that. I can't imagine that would work well at all. Sometimes it works. Never. Been a while since I shared a story here, but this just happened and I've got time, so... I receive a text from a gentleman, to be known as Cuss, who tells me the following. Me. What's the issue with the machine? Cuss. It's recently stopped turning on. It sometimes turns on without the RAM sticks, but other times not. Me. Okay, sure. Bring it on by. Customer arrives and sets his new build on my table. I pull the side panels off and start looking it over, checking all the cables, making sure everything's seated properly, while plugging in my keyboard, display, and power cable. I'm in the middle of saying, well, everything looks to be assembled correctly when I see them. You know those big tapered hard drive screws that used to mount three and a half inch hard drives into a hard drive tray? Customers used those to mount his motherboard to the case. I remarked that he's used the wrong screws and look closer as the corner of his motherboard appears to literally be bending and touching the case. <laughs> oh my god. It is. All the corners are. There are no standoffs underneath. This motherboard, except for the center notch standoff that doesn't require a screw. I stop and unplug everything and tell him I can't turn it on as is, and that the board has to be removed and either remounted properly or breadboard it to test it and make sure it's not toast. Customer. It didn't come with standoffs. Me. Typically the standoffs are already installed and the extras come in a little cardboard box tucked in the hard drive caddy of the new case. Customer. There weren't any, I would have noticed. Me. Well, I'm happy to go further and test it out and do the work 
mount it properly if everything's working properly and it hasn't been shorted out. Customer. Nah, I should be able to do this. It's just some standoffs. Right now I'm thinking, yes, you should be able to do this, but you didn't do it the first time. And not only that, you've insisted there are no standoff screws available. They didn't come pre-installed and that there were none in the case, so how are you going to achieve this? Me, is this your first build? Customer. It's my first build recently, in about 20 years. <laughs> Me. Okay, well, good luck. As a side note, I see this a lot. Typically not this bad, but it's always a variation of this. What I usually end up seeing are the wrong screws used to mount the motherboard that over time vibrate loose and dance across the motherboard, shorting things out along the way. First time I've seen hard disk drive screws used to mount the board snug to the case though. Jeez. With that thing mounted flat to the side of the case like that, I can't imagine it wouldn't be shorted out and ruined. I just, I just don't see a scenario where it didn't happen. Have any of you guys ever seen somebody do that? Not use the standoffs that came with it? And it really sounds like this guy went out of his way to take things apart to put things together, so who knows. Doctor had me fired. My company imploded. Back in the dark ages, around 1993... I worked for a medical transcription firm as their sysadmin. We were doing some cutting edge IT stuff and getting transcriptions printed at the hospitals remotely using print cues with the modem number hard coded in and the system would look for cues with anything in them and dial the number if it found something in that queue. It worked really well until it didn't. I was the only sysadmin in this city so I was on call 24-7, 365 and was averaging three hours of sleep per night when I could go home and trying to catch little catnaps here and there when I could. Anytime something would go wrong on the hospital side, I would have to go to the hospital and fix it. A few months after I started, two of the VPs from Corp lo relocated to my city, since we were the most productive city within the highest profits. The first thing they did was come up with an excuse to fire the current director. Then they took over operations themselves. Then my job went from taking care of our systems to taking care of the doctor's computers too. I did what I could, but I was also sending out resumes. Then I was told to go to a hospital and see why the printing stopped. I remember this day. I hadn't been home for two days and had been going non-stop for 18 hours. I get there. Someone had unplugged the modem. I plug it back in. Call comes in and jobs start printing. This doctor walked over and tells me that VP number one told him that I would go out to his house and work on his home computer. I politely explained to the doctor that I can't do that and that I'm heading home to get some sleep. Then I head back to the office to pick up a few things before heading home. As soon as I walk through the door, I get escorted straight to the VP's office. Both VP1 and VP2 and the office manager are there. They proceed to start chewing me out. I just started laughing at them. I'm the only person in a thousand miles that knows anything about this system. They lose their temper and tell me I'm fired and am to leave immediately. I really said, thank you, then left. This was December 15th. My oldest son's birthday. On the way home, I stop at a mom and pop computer store where I know some of the people to drop off a resume. They tell me that they have no openings right now, but will call me when they do. I talk to a couple friends while I'm there and head home. The only thing I'm worried about is telling my girlfriend that I got fired. I walk through the door. She's at work. I see the answering machine blinking, so I hit play. Mom and pop computer store. Our primary Novell engineer just quit. Are you still available? I call them back and let them know I'll be there tomorrow. That began a much more peaceful career, with better pay, rotating on call and most every weekend and holiday off. By the way, the medical transcription firm imploded. The VPs were fired. They floundered for about a year and were bought up by a competing firm. People are out of their minds. I love it when people like that step in and think they know better and, you know, I don't, I don't know what they were using to base their decisions on. Starting with firing the director, stretching this guy to his limits, thinking that they had all kinds of resources or somehow had him over a barrel so he had to do it. I, no, that doesn't, that's stupid. And why they would even set up a system where this was the only guy that knew anything about this system is beyond me. Well, thanks for hanging out today, guys. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already, do me a favor, click like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fact guy with the beard telling you stories. See ya.